and learn a little bit about these places that are you know very strongly part of the UK but many people may not know where they are or what life is like on these places. I've been to Ascension Island, Tristan da Cunha, St Helena and the Falkland Islands. I was fascinated by the idea of a community that was missing a few of the fundamental basics of community. You can't have a citizenship to Ascension Island because of the way the government have it set up. Ascension Island doesn't have an indigenous population, so everybody who lives there is purely on contract only. If you're born on the island, you still don't have a right to remain there once you reach 18. So if you don't have a job, then you can't stay. This is what Charles Darwin saw when he arrived aboard the Beagle. This bizarre landscape, this kind of sprouted what became a rather ingenious experiment. He decided to import trees and plants from all over the world. They were planted up one of the mountains. Over the years, this has had this incredible knock-on effect to create what is now the largest artificial cloud forest in the world, in this sort of lush kind of green environment. A Victorian water catchment system. Because of the increased levels of rainfall as a result of the cloud forest, it would catch rainwater and there was also a spring up the mountain. Over the years, all the farms on Ascension Island were disbanded and the cattle were either slaughtered or let free to roam. So by the time I got there, there was only one cow remaining. The big news that week happened to be, have you seen the cow? During my month on the island, I made it a point to take a picture. and you know, I'd given up and there she was, just stood in front of me. She died two days later. It suddenly became the last picture of the last cow on Ascension Island. To get to St Helena, the route that I took was I flew to Cape Town and then you pick up the last working Royal Mail ship in service. St Helena is in the middle of the Atlantic. You'll find it somewhere between southern Brazil and Angola, I suppose. Jamestown, the capital of St Helena, in the base of a valley. It basically leads onto James's Bay, so the only sort of place on the island found suitable to have a port. On a Sunday morning, it will be sleepy as anything, but if you head into Jamestown on a Friday evening, you'll be hearing you know, loud music coming from every corner. They've just come out of church. I love this image on the basis of, uh, it's quite timeless, the Baptist chapel behind them, the vicar's car, which is a Mark I escort, the idea of Sunday best, really in its strongest sense. Linda grew up in the prison. Her parents cooked for the inmates over the years and then she subsequently became the prison warden. There's only 12 inmates in there. But the best bit I liked about this was that during the 1990s, the upstairs of the prison doubled up as a video shop. A gentleman called Stephen Biggs. In the 1970s, he became purser aboard the RMS St Helena. He's originally from Torquay. He decided to buy a farmhouse, which is converted into a guest house on the island. He will greet you at the harbour with his Rolls Royce to pick you up, take you back to his farmhouse and serve you dinner in his full attire, complete with cravat. A chap called Marcus Henry. He's worked at the Met Office on St Helena since 1976. He is in charge of releasing a hydrogen-filled balloon at 11.15 precisely every single day. They have about, I think it's between six and or 700,000 sheep on the Falkland Islands. How you can be 8,000 miles from the UK in the middle of the South Atlantic. You can see so much familiarity. Getting to photograph a dress rehearsal for a nativity play. One of the most famous landmarks in Stanley, uh, it just happens to be a gnome garden, which belongs to a lady called Kay McCallum. She runs a guest house. And what you can see here is a group of German tourists who turned up to Kay's house to have a real English cup of tea and to photograph the gnomes. The governor is appointed by Her Majesty the Queen and his role on the island is to represent the interests of the people and the government of the Falkland Islands. To reach Tristan da Cunha, it takes seven days at sea from Cape Town, deep South Atlantic. At the moment, about 259 people, and they share seven surnames between the entire community. And what you can see here, two pontoons to reach ships that have to anchor offshore. This is essentially the only way on or off the island. 
Harold Green, Chief Islander, a number of times. He said he had a new door fitted to his house at one point. The door came with a set of keys and Harold didn't know what to do with them so he chucked them in the bin. Doors don't need to be locked. But in the background of this image you can see the lava flow and the cone that erupted during 1961 that saw the islanders being evacuated. This is the entire school, I think apart from two children at the time they were absent. Conrad Glass, a descendant of one of the original settlers on Tristan da Cunha, he is Tristan da Cunha's only policeman. He is in fact the only policeman for 1,750 miles in any direction. And so I, of course, when I met Conrad said, why on earth would you have a bulletproof vest? And he said, well, it just comes as, you know, part of the gear. Uh, so I said, oh, come on then, show me. He dusted it off and put it on for me. I said, oh, would you mind slinging a rifle over your shoulder? And I think he enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. 